Well, friends, here we are then today for another midweek encouragement. And I'm absolutely delighted that today I can tell you that I have Tim Codlin with me. I'm no Andrew Micklefield. Andrew's just taken a few days off on holiday uh, this week. He's popping up to Leeds to see, um, uh, to, together with his family, to see Emily, who's up there at university. But even though we haven't got Andrew, we have Tim. And Tim, I'm really looking forward to finding out a little bit about you. Uh, and I know a, a number of people across the, parish of, across the Parish of the Resurrection do know you, but there's a number who probably don't. And even those that do know you can find out now a little bit more about Tim Codlin. And I'm sure, friends, this will be an encouragement for all of us. So, Tim, question number one is always the same whenever we do a midweek encouragement. Tim, how do you take your tea? I take vast quantities of it, Gordon. Uh, <laughs> morning, noon and night. I like it uh, hot. Milky with no sugar. Hot milk. I like it in my best oh, mug, but unfortunately, my best mug I cannot find. So, this oh. is my second best mug, tea for Tim. But <laughs> I like vast quantities all the time. Brilliant. So, we, we haven't got your favourite mug, which you can't find, but actually, you have a second favourite mug. That is it. This Brilliant. Is I one. like it. Yep. Tim, I like it. I don't think we've had anybody come on to do your midweek encouragement and have a second favourite mug. So anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Let me ask you another question then. Um, like I say, a number of people do you, do know you, but just remind us, you know, how did you come to be in Alton? How long have you been here? Where'd you live? Those sorts of things. Just give us a flavour of that. Well, I'm a Kentish man originally. I come from west of the uh, River Medway and uh, we came down here 31 years ago when I moved with my job from uh, ICI. I worked for ICI uh, and I took on the role as what's known as a seed treatment engineer who looks after the application of seed uh, treatments onto cereal seeds uh, and the manufacture of machinery to apply that. Gosh. So their application machineries, uh, which I went all over the world uh, or to several countries in the world, uh, selling our wares and promoting the uh, seed treatments. Um, so we came here 31 years ago. I have two young children or had two young children then a girl and a boy, and uh, we settled where we are now after looking for various places along the uh, southern coast of England. Uh, I, my patch used to be from uh, Kent down to Cornwall and up to Berkshire and around that area. Gosh. And Alton, when we came to it, was a strange little uh, market town, <laughs> uh, unlike what it is now. Uh, very friendly. I, I can remember going into shops and wait, having to wait while somebody was talking about somebody's new baby and how they were getting on, et cetera, et cetera. And I always used to think to myself, just get out of the way and let me crack on. <laughs> but then I realised that um, people here had time for you and they would talk to you. Yeah. So we settled here. And as I say, we've been here 31 years. We've now got two lovely grandchildren as well. And oh. very shortly, we're hoping uh, to be the grandparents of uh, two more uh, oh gosh! Your uh, grandchildren. You'll have four all together. Gosh. We'll have four all together, and oh, um, and you know I love them all dearly, or will love them when the next two arrive. <laughs> Brilliant! Thank um, you, Tim. That's, yeah. that's great. How, how long? So, so you retired to Alton, in effect, really? Was that or uh, I retired ten years ago. Oh, but okay. Ultimately, um, I applied for this position of a seed treatment engineer, which meant that I had to move somewhere in the middle of the south of England. Uh, either on the coast area or somewhere like that. But we found Alton, which is really slap bang in the middle of the patch, which enabled me to get onto the motorways and the various dual carriageways fairly quickly Yes, and look after customers. And all, uh, during the autumn, when we had the uh, cereals coming in out of the fields, they had to, the farmers and merchants had to turn them around very quickly to get them back into the ground for October, November, uh, which meant that there were quite a few breakdowns happening and people needed your time. So it meant rushing around and, um, as I say, you could get down to Kent and then get a call from Cornwall. Gosh. So you were kept on your toes for at least three months. Golly. Tim, that's, that's really amazing. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I knew a little bit about what you uh, have done for a career, but, gosh, that seems, sounds incredible. Let's, let's just take it on a little bit, stage it a little bit further now, and just tell me, just give me a little bit of a flavour, because you're a member of the Parish of the Resurrection, uh, mainly tend to go to St. Lawrence, but very much part of the parish. Tell me just a little bit about, tell us a little bit about your your faith journey, how you got to this point. Well, I suppose I've always been a Christian. Um, like a lot of people, I got to a certain age 
uh, when I left the church and down in Kent, I mean, my dad used to look after the grounds there. My mother looked after the cleaning in the church, oh. big old Anglo-Catholic church. I sang in the choir along with my brother. And uh, eventually when we got married, uh, I still maintained a certain amount of faith, but not as uh, much as I did uh, in the early days. Uh, then I tended to move away from the church like a lot of people possibly did in my teens or later in my uh, early life, in my early 20s. And um, then when we came to uh, Alton, I, I don't know, this. It's sometimes God works in mysterious ways. And I sit looking at the congregation sometimes and look at people of faith on the television and they have these epiphanies where <laughs> suddenly they see the light. And I've been waiting for that for 70 years now. Um, but I've never given up hope. And sometimes I look back and I think to myself, well, I have got my faith and it's not been an epiphany, but it's gradually grown on me. And, and the reason why perhaps I do so many things in the church and for the church is my way of serving God. And, and he's called me to it. And, um, and that's maybe my role as a Christian. Absolutely, Tim. And uh, for many people, it isn't an epiphany. For some it is, for some it isn't. Uh, and it, God sort of works in us in different ways, doesn't he? Because uh, I know, I know, and I think a lot of people know, you get involved in all sorts of stuff and it's absolutely brilliant. And I think it's a huge encouragement to many of us. So let's just take it on a stage further than Tim. Just, just remind us of some of the things that you love to get involved with, with the Parish of the Resurrection. Uh, working for the Parish or being a member of the Parish of the Resurrection, uh, we look. At, we have the men's breakfast once a month, yeah. as you probably know, because you attend. Yeah, love um, it. <laughs> I work on the uh, resurrection furniture van with the other chuckle brother, Clive. <laughs> so we're a pair with young Gary. Um, we do Wednesday mornings normally. Uh, we used to have various other uh, things like fairs and Christmas markets and things like that, which I've been involved in. Skittles evening, quiz evenings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we normally help on the working party when we look after the hedges and various things in the churchyard. Um, so we have many fingers uh, in many pies, really. And uh, I'm, I'd like to think I'm always willing to help people uh, if they have problems or need something doing in the church. I was church warden at one stage, which kept me very busy for six Gosh. years. I'm glad to say I've handed that mantle on now to <laughs> others <laughs> who have inherited it. Um, so, yeah, I've been fairly busy Um working for the church and, and with the church really yeah. and you also when you mentioned the uh, uh resurrection furniture i think you're also now a trustee okay. i'm a trustee of the resurrection furniture along with uh three four others yes uh, which keeps us quite busy um there's quite a lot going on as regards to the resurrection furniture business itself hmm. and uh and all the volunteers that work on the van and in the shop they're all an integral part a big family really yeah. and, and yeah. we get on well um, and it and it gets us out and about to meet people and, and to sometimes share our faith with them as well when we go to do deliveries or pickups. Yes, it's always nice to actually um, speak to people and uh, and they often ask you know why we do it and what is a resurrection furniture shop and it enables us to um, instill our faith uh, mm. and explain it to them. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Tim. Tim, thank you. Um, it's brilliant to just hear about how you live your faith out. And I think that, you know, you're a great example of that. And I hope, again, that's, I'm, I'm sure that is a huge encouragement to all of us. Um, but just to bring this to a close, there's other, lots of other things I know that you get involved with, lots of things. I mean, I, I always like to ask people who's their favourite football team, but I know there's no point in me asking you that today because I know in advance that you're not a football man, but you are, I believe, another kind of yeah, football game right. man. Yeah. Yes, we worship the uh, oblong ball or the oval ball. You can't um, say worship, not on a church thing, mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a football fan, but um, I am a great lover of London Irish and uh, I've been a, a member with the, um, uh, the uh, family group of the life, uh, London Irish for many years now. Uh, and they moved to Brentford, as you probably know, and uh, from uh, the Medeski Stadium at Reading, which is not always the easiest place to find. So... I had my first uh, venture up there in their new stadium a couple of weeks ago, and it was one of those wonderful autumnal days. Um, and I stood by the River Thames and by Kew Bridge with a couple of pints of Guinness in my hand. And, and I just wondered again, it's God's, you know, God's creation mm -hmm. to see the old Thames just drifting by and the colour of the trees all changing. 
Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do so well as regards to playing because we lost to Leicester Tigers. But we did have a really good result last Saturday when we thrashed Exeter 33-21. So that's one of my big, um, big uh, sports, if you like, that I follow. And also one of the other things I enjoy are steam locomotives. And uh, I've, for many years since I retired, I've been talking about going and walk, working on the Watercrest line. Being so busy, I've never really got round to doing it, but it's one of those things that yeah. is in my bucket list to do. So, yeah, I've got quite a lot to do and keep me company and, and keep me busy, really. Yeah, brilliant. Tim, thank you. Thank you so much. It's really, more than really, welcome, good, Gordon. really good to hear from you and yeah. uh, great for other people to hear a little bit about Tim Codlin. Just give a plug there to the Men's Breakfast as well, which you organise and make happen, and it's absolutely brilliant. So, guys out there, if you've never been to the Men's Breakfast, Try it. It's a fabulous breakfast. Always a good speaker. And Tim always organises it brilliantly. So, um, Tim, let's close. Let's close now because we can't talk forever. Uh, let me finish. I'd just love to pray for you. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, Lord, I lift Tim before you uh, together with his lovely family and particularly his grandchildren and also grandchildren to be. Uh, Lord, I thank you. We thank you for all that Tim does, the way that he gets involved uh, across the parish of the resurrection serving you through um, resurrection furniture, uh, through organising the men's breakfast, uh, and through just generally helping people out in all sorts of ways. Uh, thank you for the way that he served uh, POTR as church warden and for the many other things that he does as he worships you, as he honours you and glorifies you. Lord, thank you for him. And would you bless him and protect him and watch over him and his family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Good to see you. Bye for now, mate. Cheers, Gordon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>